Hello and welcome to another video. This one is explaining a bit of a weird thing in Python. Uh, we're gonna talk about the ID function and why seemingly different objects can have exactly the same ID. Uh, so let's jump into it. Okay, so first, uh, I guess we're just gonna open up a Python interpreter. So first let's talk about the ID function. Um, it is a built-in function in Python and if we look at the help for it, We'll see that it returns the identity of the object. Uh, now, see in C Python, which is the main implementation of Python that pretty much everyone uses, um, except for PyPy, I guess. Uh, in in C Python, this is the memory address of the object, and you'll see that it says this is guaranteed to be unique among simultaneously existing objects. And C Python uses the object's memory address, and so you can kind of think of it as a unique identifier for an object. And so if we call you know, ID on some some objects, you'll see that they have you know a particular memory address where they live, and if we you know call it on the same object again, usually if that object is long lived, such as the integers which are cached, you'll see that they uh, get the same memory address back. Um, and if you you know assign an object, um, then this will maintain its same memory address and unless it gets you know deleted or, or recreated or whatever. Uh, so that's the ID function. And the weird behavior that came up in a tweet, if I recall correctly, was that if you do ID of float one and check its equality against ID of float two, um, you would think, or, or in, intuitively, uh, having not seen this problem before, I would assume that like, you know, float one is some object and float two is some other object. And so they will have a different ID. So I would intuitively expect this to be false. However, if we run this, you'll see that it's true. And the reason for this is a little bit subtle. Um, in fact, if we, you know, ID float one and ID float two, you'll see that they do in fact have the same ID, which means that they have the same memory address. Now, if we uh, go back to the documentation of the ID function, you'll notice that there's a very subtle wording here that's um, it kind of gives us away. Oh, we can't see it because it's on the screen. <laughs> we'll show it on the screen then. Uh, there's there's some there's some subtle language here that talks about simultaneously existing objects, and that is because objects in Python, when they are no longer referenced, they get garbage collected, so they're they're deleted. They no longer exist. And so what's actually happening inside this expression here is once this function call returns, this float one object is no longer needed. Nothing references it, so it gets deleted. Uh, and so that allows another object to be allocated in exactly the same place. So this float two object comes along and it slots into the same spot as where that float one object was. If we wanna visualize this a little bit better, we can make a little class uh, which has you know, an init, which says uh, init and id self, see the object. And we're also going to override del, uh, which is kind of, you can think of it like a destructor. This almost never gets used in Python because the garbage collector can make it a little bit unreliable when del gets called. And often you'll use like the context manager protocol instead of del. But we're going to use it here to demo uh, the construction and deletion of these particular objects. Uh, so if we do IDC, um, you'll see that, uh, actually let's do print IDC, that way we can definitely see the order that things run in. Um, so you can see that, you know, in it was called, we constructed a C object, uh, and then del was called because C was no longer used after this ID function was returned. And then we printed that ID. So you'll, you'll see that this expression creates a temporary C object. It gets deleted because its reference count falls to zero. Um, and again, that's a C Python implementation detail and other implementations. Its reference may live on longer than that. Um, PyPy, let's do PyPy3 because two is kind of old. I mean, they're the same version, but uh, I'd rather run Python 3. Uh, let's see if this actually produces in, in PyPy. Okay, yeah. In PyPy, the object lifetimes may be ver more variable. Uh, PyPy is not reference counted in the same way that CPython is. So 
um, you'll see that this is false in, in PyPy, but true in, in CPython. Um, because in CPython, objects are immediately collected if their reference count falls to zero. Um, and of course, if we do IDC equals IDC, we'll see exactly the same behavior that we saw before with the floats in that they have the same one. And that is because they're initialized and deleted um, in sequence. But anyway, hopefully, hopefully that was interesting. A bit of a weird behavior in Python, but hopefully you have a better mental model as to why it works that way in CPython. Anyway, thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.